It has been a year and a half since I began development on a game I temporarily call Codename iDungeon. In that time, I have gone from poorly edited and narrated videos to something that takes hours to plan, write, and edit. A lot has changed since then, and a lot has changed since the last devlog. So without further ado, let's get one step closer to release. Hello everyone. Mike the Maniac here, and before this video begins, I'd like to thank every one of you, subbed and not subbed, for watching this video. I wrote up a script around two weeks ago and trashed it as I wasn't ready to produce this video. But now, here we are. I'd like to say that the game prototype is up on itch.io right now, but please stick around to learn about how this whole thing came to be. On the tail end of the last video, I demonstrated a rough implementation of the item system in my game. I am not so proud to say that not much has changed with it. However, I have gotten around to adding randomized loot to both the wooden and golden chests. I laid everything out on spreadsheets to make it easier to balance in the future, and a lot can be approved upon. But hey, it works. Along with that, I have added three new weapons into the game. First we have the sword. This weapon does 4 damage. Next, the axe does 6 damage. And lastly we have the mace. The mace does 4 damage, but also has a special attack, which hasn't been implemented, but we'll talk about that later. Now this video obviously isn't about items, it is about something else. But what led me from developing an item system to turn that into a pseudo-release of the game? Well, sometime in July, I developed an idea to maybe release a prototype version of my game. As I have explained previously, the alpha stage of development has been internal, and I plan to have a public beta release. However, the alpha stage of development is almost complete, and what a better way to reflect that than with a little taste of what the game entails. Beta 1.0 probably won't be this rough and rudimentary, but it'll have to do for right now. This is what I call the open beta prototype which first started as an idea to revamp the game's demo levels. This actually started in June, but it was only in July when I considered an actual release. This demo revamp includes a central hub, a lighting demo, a combat tutorial, a campaign demo, and a stress test. A big improvement from what I showed off here. Before we get into the level design, trailer, and future plans for the project, let me talk about the small little things I've either changed or implemented into this open beta prototype. First off, the fancy cursor is back. After being removed for a little amount of lag it caused, I finally re-implemented it with the option to turn it off. The game also has a pause menu. I added this since every game needs one. Also, along with this change is the ability for the player to restart a level when killed. This is because the only way of restarting a level was by restarting the whole game entirely, and no one wants to do that. Lastly, and this isn't something little, it is something that is actually quite big. Tux the Penguin has been telling me how lonely he is, so I'm proud to announce that Codename iDungeon proudly runs on Linux. GameMaker requires Ubuntu to compile, so I set up a virtual machine using Hyper-V and compiled it there. But not to worry, the game seems to run on Manjaro as well, so it should theoretically run on any Linux distro. Maybe even a Raspberry Pi. I might have to test that. Before we get into the future plans for the game, let me briefly go over my level design process. As you can see in this footage, I am literally just sketching out the first level on my computer. Nothing fancy except for a guide to follow when designing it in GameMaker Studio 2. I did this for the first two levels, but for the third, I thought of using good old-fashioned pencil and paper. Hello. <laughs> Alrighty, so the plan. Um, so I want level three to be kind of big, because the last two levels have been kind of small. Alrighty, so this is basically what I have of level three so far. Uh, no enemies or anything yet. All I know is I kind of want a blank space right there. But Lastly... Once I had everything laid out to my liking, I finally went on to record some footage for a little one minute trailer. I followed this video from Game Maker's Toolkit so I could lay my trailer out to tell a story. And here are the first 10 or so seconds of it. If you 
want to watch the full trailer, the video is in the description and also on the itch.io page. Now let's talk about the future. What is the future for my game? Well, in the last episode, I introduced you to the three enemies the player will be facing in my game. But how can they be improved? For one, the AI needs polished, so that's a start. One thing I was thinking for the zombie and skeleton were different variants. Zombies are decaying and rotting bodies, so why should there only be one type? Why not two, three, or twelve? Well, twelve is just what I'm thinking. I'm thinking of having a Cyclops variant, a Skeletal variant, a Human variant, and a Human Skeletal variant of zombies. Each of these four variants will have three other variants. These will include how many arms a zombie has. A variant with both arms, a variant with a left arm, and a variant with a right arm. I am also thinking the same for the skeleton except with six total variants. One cyclops, one human, and both with arms intact or some missing. But what about the mage? Well, I am thinking of a big nerf for the mage actually. His special attack is just a little too overpowered and I am thinking of removing it. The mage would also have a melee attack so that they don't just run away after being depleted of mana. To compensate for removing the mage's necromancy attack, I will implement a special feature where he turns into a zombie when he dies. I am also going to add a new enemy that ties into the lore of the game and will have a special attack. This new enemy will be the cultist. He will essentially replace the current mage. When you download the game, there is a special file called lore.txt that contains the backstory of the game. This ties into the cultist's special attack which will be stealing the player's health. This will be used as the cultist's last resort when he is low on health, just like the mage's necro attack. However, unlike the mage, the cultist will not have a limited amount of magic. Another enemy I have planned is the Bomb Knight. This enemy would kind of be like a player equivalent and his name is pretty self-explanatory. I've actually been tossing this idea around in my head for about a year now, so I'll be glad when I can finally implement this enemy. Second to last, and this feature is explained on the beautiful itch.io page, but I also want to add NPCs into the game. These NPCs would be found throughout the dungeons and would sell the player items and weapon upgrades for coins. And last but not least, the Mesa stun feature that I mentioned earlier. This feature will simply stun any enemies after being hit with a mace, and this doesn't sound like much, but the goal would be to buy you some time to either run away or hit them with another weapon. And with all of that, this video has come to an end. You can download the game on the itch.io page linked in the description. That is mikethemaniac.itch.io forward slash cned proto. And let me know what you think about this game and this video in the comments down below. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm going to take a much needed break after this. With school starting up and me entering my senior year of high school, it might be a while until I release another devlog. Maybe we will be in beta at that point. But without further ado, I must leave you now. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>